Hello, 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 God's beautiful and precious people. It's been a while, but I am back with a word from the Lord. And I just pray that you all are blessed. It's early morning. It's the wee hours and most people are asleep, but I am up uh, with the Father. And um, I have a word that he gave me on May 24th. And I kind of just sat on the word um, because of what he said to me. And um, so, but now it's time for me to release the word. And I heard God as clear as day when he said this. He said this to me when I woke up and then I laid back down to go to sleep. And when I laid back down to go to sleep, because uh, oftentimes that's when God really deals with me. When I lay down to go to sleep, he starts dealing with me and he starts speaking to me. He starts talking to me. He starts downloading things in my spirit. So when I lay down to go back to sleep, I heard God say, my anger will punish those in sin. I'll say this again. God said, my anger will punish those in that are in sin and when he said it i was just like okay lord okay i didn't know what to say i was just like okay lord all right i hear you lord and so um i'm just gonna say this now uh my channel is not this ministry this channel that god has given me is not to sugarcoat the word of the lord i come declaring the word with boldness with confidence with truth and the ability to know that god speaks to me to declare his word exactly how he has given it to me but with love because god loves you he cares for you deeply and he wants to see you prosperous he wants to see you inherit the kingdom that is so rightfully yours which is the kingdom of heaven so i'm coming with love to declare this word because i'm not here i'm not here for fame i'm not here for um to, for a stance for stamina you know on, on youtube that's not what i'm here for i'm here to see god's people set free to be delivered to be changed to be healed to be transformed to receive salvation to receive the gift of life to receive the inheritance that christ has promised that christ came and gave his life for so god um has given me ezekiel Ezekiel 18 verse 4 verse 20 and verse 30 through 32 to declare his word my anger will punish those who are in sin and I want you guys to receive this word with love receive this word for with love because that's what God is and God says he disciplined those that he loves God says I do not forget the guilt of of those who are guilty i punish those who are guilty i remember their guilt and i punish them according to what they have done according to their deeds whether it is good or bad god rewards you and he he he, he renders justice according to what you have put out according to your actions according to your deeds so ezekiel verse 18 and all of these are the niv version verse 4 says for everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Ezekiel 18, 20. The one who sins is the one who will die. The child would not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteous of the righteous will be credited to, to them and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them verse 18 uh 30 through 32 therefore you israelites i will judge each of you according to your own ways declares the sovereign lord repent turn away from your offenses then sin will not be your downfall rid yourselves of the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit while why will you die 
people of Israel. For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord, repents and live. So I think this word is very, very, very important for this time right now that we are facing. For the season right now that we are in because of all the troubles in the world that we are facing with all the riots right now take, taking place with all the un civil unrest with all the looting right now taking place. I want you all to know and understand that the things that are happening in the world God allows because his word has to come forth whatever God has spoken. From former times to now to, to the future, his word has to come forth. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, God's word has to come forth because he is sovereign over all people and all things. And, you know, back in, in the times where in the Old Testament, God, whoever sinned back in those times, whether it be the parent or the child, God would punish the, the, the generation. He says, I punish the generation from the third down to the fourth, even to the fourth generation. So right now, God is saying right now in Ezekiel that that no longer stands. Whoever sins, whether it be the parent or the child, they will face the punishment which they so rightly deserve. The punishment of their sins. They will be judged according to their own sins. Not, not for the parent's sins. And the parents not for the child's sins. The child will be punished according to his own sins. And the parents will be uh, punished according to their own sins. And God takes no delight. He takes no delight in murder. In the, the, the uh, unrelentless, unrelentless killings that are taking place right now in the world. He takes no delight in that. You see this in his word. God says, I take no pleasure in the death of anyone. You know, God holds the power of life and death in his hands. But it is not by God's hand that these people die the way that they die. That is not of God. What is happening today is not of God. The way you see these people dying right now, that's not of God. That's not the work of the, the Lord. God says, I take no pleasure in that, but because of my word, because of what I spoke, I cannot take that back. I cannot change my mind. I cannot change my word because I am not like man. I'm not like humans to change my mind. I do what I say when I say how I will say it. God's word has to accomplish what he sends for it. For, for it's accomplished. His word says that his word does not lie. His word cannot return back to him void. So once he speak a word, it has to come forth. So God is saying right now, in this time, in this hour, you need to repent. You need to repent. And I'm saying this with love. Because we are living in the end times. We are living in the last days. And God says, right now, my wrath. My anger will punish those in sin. Take the example of the Israelites. You know, they were God's chosen people. They are God's chosen people. But because they kept doing these abominations, these detestable things, God had to punish them. He had to punish them. His anger came down like fire upon their heads. And he had to do it. But he did it out of love. He did it out of love because he was saying in Ezekiel and in Jeremiah, these people did worse things than Sodom and Gomorrah. They were sacrificing their children to false gods, to evil idols on evil altars. God said, that's not me. That, was thought, that never even crossed my mind for my people to do those things. Oh my God. Woo. God said that never even crossed my mind. The things that my people are doing never even crossed my mind. Why would you do such a thing? I love you. I care for you. I chose you out of all the nations. To be my chosen people. To be my royal priesthood. This is not of me. And I'm coming to you out of love right now. 
because God is saying, I, I don't want to punish my people, but if my people don't turn back, if they don't turn back, if they won't repent, then I have to. I have to because I have to set a standard in place for my people. I have to set a standard in place for my people. God told the Israelites, choose ye this day life and blessings or death and destruction. He said in, these, uh, in, in Isaiah, I knew my people was a stiff necked people, but I still chose them. You know, God gave me a revelation a while back. You know, this is a generational curse that started in the Garden of Eden with Eve, with Adam when they sinned. It has been passed down since that time. From generation to generation to generation to generation, it's being passed down. And it has to be broken. The cycles have to be broken. The curses have to be broken. The evil seeds that's been sown, the even evil seeds that's been planted has to be uprooted. They have to be uprooted. God said that our name, our name has power. It has authority. It is who he has called us to be, who he has purposed us to be, who he has destined us to be. He changed, like I told you all previously, God said, I'm changing your name to fit the purpose that I, has, that I have placed upon your life, the mantle that I have placed upon your life, the anointing that I have placed upon your life. I'm changing your name to fit where I am taking you, to fit what I have called you to do before you were even in your mother's wombs. And he reminded me of Jacob reading Isaiah, he reminded me of Jacob when Jacob fought with God and God changed his name. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. Your name will be Israel because you fought with me. And where did the Israelites come from? The ones he, he brought out of Egypt. Where did they come from? They came from Israel. They came from Jacob. They were birthed out of Jacob. That's why they are called the Israelites. Because God knew that they were going to be a rebellious people. He knew that they were going to fight with him. He knew that they were going to wrestle with him. He knew that they were going to fight and rebel against the commands that he had set in place. God knew this. It was a generational curse that was passed down from Jacob. Because Jacob fought with God. And that curse passed down to the Israelites. They fought with God. That's why they were named the Israelites. Because they were birthed from Israel. They were birthed from fighting with God. It was sown into them. It was passed down from generation to generation to generation. When he destroyed those people in the wilderness, the Israelites in the wilderness, after the, and he brought them out of Egypt, they had more children. They, their children was the one who inherited the land flowing with milk and honey. And because that curse was never broken, it kept passing down from generation to generation. Fighting with God, rebelling against God, the abominations, the adultery. And God says, I want my people to live. God said, I, I would hope that you would choose life. I would prefer that you would choose life today. Choose life today life life and blessings because i don't want to see you go down a road of death and destruction i sent my son so that you would have life and have life more abundantly you know yes god wants you to live and he wants you to live a fruitful life a prosperous life a successful life a abundant life flowing with milk and honey flowing with milk and honey God says, turn away from not one of your offenses, all of your offen offenses. Rid yourself of the offenses that you have committed. And the offenses, what he is saying is the sin. We need to be like David. When David sinned that time with Bathsheba and he murdered that man. 
Did God let that go unpunished? No. No, just like today. He sees our sins. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, he sees. And God says, I don't forget your guilt unless you turn away. Unless you repent. I don't forget. I remember these things. And I'm going to punish you in my anger. In my wrath. I'm going to send down my fire of judgment upon you. Just like I did the Israelites. If you don't turn back. If you don't repent. God says why will you die? I have sent my prophets. Time after time. To warn you. To bless you. To guide you. To instruct you. To lead you. Will you continuously disobey my word through my prophets? To the leaders that I have put in place? Will you continuously rebel against the things that I have said? Rebellion is, is as worse as witchcraft. It's as worse as witchcraft. And if you're operating in rebellion, you might as well be operating in witchcraft. God loves you. And that's why he says right now in his word. Get a new heart and a new spirit. God said this. You know, we look at Ezekiel 36 where he was telling the people that he was going to bring them back to the land. And he was going to take away their stony heart. And replace it with the heart of, of flesh. God said this. Spoke this three times. Once in chapter 11. The first time in chapter 11. Where he said get a new heart and a new spirit. This second time. In Ezekiel 18. Get a new heart and a new spirit. But he said in 11. I will give you a new heart and a new, and a new spirit. So he's telling the people, he told them twice. And God says, speaks his word twice. He speaks his word twice to confirm his word that it shall come forth, that it shall be manifested, that it shall come to pass. But right now in verse eight, in, in, in verse 31 in chapter 18, he's saying what you need to do. He's not saying he's going to do it right here. He's saying to the people through Ezekiel, what you need to do is get a new heart and a new spirit. Why would you die? This is a question for not only Israel, but for you. Why would you die when I sent my son to give you salvation and not just life, but life everlasting life beyond this life here on earth? That was my sole purpose from beginning. In Genesis, Jesus was Jesus was spoken of in Genesis after Adam and Eve sinned. That he was coming. Because God had already knew. That that was the purpose that he had to bring about. Because he already knew what Israel was going to do. What the Israelites was going to do. Because he's all-knowing God. He's all-knowing. There's nothing hidden from his sight. In Psalms, David said, light, is, light and darkness is the same for, to you. What, you. what we do in the dark shall come to the light. Because God sees all. He sees all. He knows all. There's no difference in light and darkness to him. Because he created it. He is light. It's, it's difference to us. Because that's the way he created it. He didn't create it to be the same to us as it is to him. God is saying, repent that you may live. I want to see you live. I want to see you prosper. I want to see you walk in the fullness of the life that I've given you here on earth. The life that I, the abundance of, of life in heaven. I want to see that done here on the earth. 
as it is in heaven, let it be on the earth. God is speaking to you now. He's calling you. He's calling you to turn back, to repent and live. Right now, he's calling his people to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. If we want to see change brought about in the world and what is going on right now, we have to fall on our knees and pray. We have to take a posture of prayer. Because that's how we fight. We fight with prayer. We fight with prayer. That's how we're going to see change and transformation and restoration and healing and deliverance and freedom and peace brought about in the earth. It's prayer. God has called me to pray about these things. God has called me to deliverance and to see his people free. And that's why he give me these words because he know I have a heart to see his people set free from bondages, from yokes. Jesus already came to set you free from the, these things. He said, whom the son sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Accept the freedom that he has given you. Jesus is knocking at the door. Will you accept the invitation for him to come in and eat with you? And you to eat with him. He wants to feed you with the. He is the bread of life. And he wants to feed you. So you will never hunger. So you will never thirst. He's the well that never runs dry. And God is saying right now. I don't want to. But if you don't repent. I have to. Please. Please repent so that you may live. There's only one person who comes to kill, steal, and destroy God's word. Tell us that in John 10.10. 10. There's only one person who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that is Satan. God, Jesus came. So that you may have life and have life more abundantly. So I pray that this word helps somebody. That it changes somebody. That it sets somebody free. That it blesses somebody. Because God is saying right now, I need my people to repent. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. Revelations is taking place right now. And there's no change in that. There's no stopping that. And I need my people to be ready. I need my people to be ready. So, Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for your precious warnings, oh God. Because we know that warning comes before destruction, oh God. And I thank you that your people would take heed to this word. Your sons and daughters, oh God. The body of Christ would take heed to this word, oh God, that you would order, you would God, that you would lead them in the way of life through your spirit, oh God. That you will order their steps in your will and your purpose over their lives right now, oh God. I speak peace right now. I speak healing right now. I speak deliverance right now, oh God. I speak freedom right now, oh God. Through the airways, oh God. I call your four winds, oh God, from one end to the earth to the other end of the earth, oh God. That you would blow a wind of healing, deliverance, and freedom and stability right now over your people, oh God. Peace and love and blessings over your people right now, oh God. I pray right now that they would choose love life today life and blessings oh god and they would turn away from death and destruction oh god that they would turn away from their sins oh god and that they would seek your face oh god that they will seek you oh god that they will seek life and life more abundantly oh god through your son jesus christ oh god because you said that you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son that was the greatest sacrifice of all oh god so that we may inherit the kingdom of god that we may inherit salvation 
protection, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your word, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, that your people will receive it with love, oh God. Because you said, oh God, that love, perfect love, casts out fear, oh God. And that love, your precious love, oh God, your unfailing love, your unchanging love, your never ending love. Oh God, right now, cast out sin. Oh God, and we cast out sin right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, because we were crucified with Christ on the cross, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, that it is no longer us that live. It is no longer the flesh that lives within us, oh God, but it is you, oh God, that we live by faith in Christ Jesus, oh God, that Christ Jesus is the one that lives inside of us, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, that Christ has taken root within us, oh God. The will of you have taken root, have taken plant within us oh god have taken ground within us oh god in the mighty name of jesus god and i just thank you now for your word oh god and that your people will receive it like i said with the love oh god because you are love you are love oh god you know nothing else but love because that's who you are oh god you are a god of love you are love and we thank you, oh God, that you give us the, the ability, oh God, that you give us the grace to oh hold on to your unchanging hand. Your unchanging hand, oh God. I speak peace right now over the minds of the people right now, oh God. Over the hearts of the people, oh God. That you would heal their hearts, oh God. That you would heal their minds, oh God. That you would heal their bodies, oh God. That you would heal their spirits, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I decree right now, oh God, that they shall live and not die. They shall live and not die. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your servants who deliver your word with love, oh God, in obedience to you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you guys. I love you guys. And God loves you. He loves you way past your understanding way past your understanding with an unmeasurable love you guys be blessed in the mighty name of jesus see you later